Alright, step one to access the carburetors, you need to get the rider's seat off. So you have two 5mm Allens, one, two, and two 6mm Allens down here that have to be removed. And then the seat, the rider's seat will come off. The next step is to open up the gas for the fuel cap access and remove the fuel cap. Uh, these four 10 millimeters will come off as well as these three here and then these two down here at the bottom. The fuel cap will have to be removed to lift that up. To remove the meter assembly, you have to remove these allens up here and then this will lift off and then make sure you capture the rubber trim pieces that go with the meter assembly. There's an electrical connection in the center underneath the assembly that has to be disconnected. All right, the next step is to remove the air box. You're going to have uh, two clamp screws down here, uh, one to each intake for each carburetor. So you've got two clamp Phillips heads down there. And then you're going to have a breather hose down here and another breather hose connected at the nose of the air box. So four connections have to be loosened or removed to remove the air box. All right, so after removing the air box, you should see a situation similar to this. Uh, this is your breather off the air line, or the air box, excuse me. This is your fuel line. This will need to come off. Uh, make sure you have the two intake clamps at the base of the carburetors um, backed off with a Phillips head. Your two throttle cables over here will need to be uh, removed, loosened and removed with a 10 millimeter open ended wrench. Um, your throttle position sensor, which is this electrical connection right here. And then once you lift up the carburetors, you'll see the uh, choke plate down there. There's a cable that needs to be detached before you can completely separate the carburetors from the engine. All right, at this point, make sure you're accountable to a few things. You've got your throttle position sensor, which is your electrical connection here. You've got this vent line off of the air box. You have the fuel in line to the carburetor. You have the choke cable, which in this case I disconnected instead of fishing it through, which is kind of the obvious thing to do. Plug your intake here. I stuff paper towels down there. And then make sure you know where your throttle cables are and separate your push and pull. That way you don't get them mixed up um, when you're putting it back together. Obviously, this is a great time to clean lube your throttle cable uh, cables prior to putting it back together. All right, so here I am just scrubbing the exterior of the carburetors. I want to make sure I get all the dirt and grime off before I start the disassembly. I'm going to start with the float bowl disassembly, so three screws on each float bowl. Um, being a little stubborn here, I decided to get a Phillips head and an impact out. Um, obviously, you got to take this with a grain of salt. If it's not going to break loose, sometimes you got to get it off with an impact, but... You want to try to avoid that if possible, but here you see them coming off pretty smoothly. Um, you know, keep everything organized, flow bowl removal, I'm checking the flow, make sure it's moving freely. Um, I've separated via left and right, as you can see here. Gaskets are completely flat on the flow bowls. I'm going to remove the floats now. Um, usually this is a lot more simple. There's something blocking the pin from coming out on the right side and not only that but also pushing it out from the right to the left so i'm trying to find a pick that will squeeze in there to give me enough uh leverage on the other end to drag the pin out which is what's happening here um, checking the float valve itself out and getting the other one out and then I'm going to move on to the jets, um, just kind of inspecting here. Always weary of the slow or the pilot jet. Luckily, these came out pretty pretty well after I inspected them through the light here. They're pretty clogged, um, not completely clogged, but definitely not shining as much light through them as they should be. Uh, let's see, I think we transferred to the main jet after inspecting the pilot jet or the slow jet. So we're cracking the main jet open right now. This jet is the easiest one to strip the head off of, so make sure you get a screwdriver that fits appropriately. And now we're gonna get an eight millimeter uh, nut driver off to get the jet holder out of the body of the carburetor. More inspection. Uh, this is a pan head Phillips head screw that holds the float valve um, in the body of the carburetor. So this comes with a carburetor rebuild kit and obviously you want to replace this. The O-rings in these go bad eventually, and then you start having a fuel leak uh, from the overflow.
All right, I'm going to move to the top of the carburetors and take the caps off. They have to go on a certain way, even though there's only two screws per cap. That's why I made that little finger point out there. Uh, just be aware of that. Cap comes off, spring comes off, and then you can work on the uh, vacuum piston and the diaphragm. Obviously, be very, very careful with the diaphragm. If you tear it, it's junk. Um, there's an O-ring right there that I'm picking off right now that is included in the rebuild kit. It's a very small O-ring. You will miss it if you're not looking for it. Um, and these needles were actually in pretty good condition. I try to reuse all of the factory Jetson needles if I can. Um, I prefer to use the Kian and Makuni originals. All right, moving on to the air cutoff valve. Pretty simple, five pieces here. Uh, they do have to go back in a certain way, though. So two screws, the cap, the spring, and the diaphragm. Um, this will pop off at you if you're not keeping the pressure on the spring. So there's your spring, your cap, your diaphragm. And like I said, those two pieces have to go back on a certain way. And then I'm just going to check that ball valve right there and make sure it seems to be functioning correctly which in this case it is. All right, so now I'm gonna separate the carburetors. I'm gonna start by removing the choke and the enricher plate. You have two screws accompanied with two uh, plastic washers. Those come off and then the plate that slides the choke uh, or the enrichment circuit comes off. And that's for separating the carburetors. There are two 10 millimeter um, hex heads that you need to break loose and get off. One of them has a nut on the other end. Uh, basically, those two long bolts hold the bodies of the carburetors together. And then you've got a couple things in the middle. One gets those spacers right there. The other one comes out. And then you just have to be aware that there's the fuel joint in the middle and a spring as well where the sink screw is um, that you have to be accountable to. And that has to obviously go back in the correct position. On the end where my right hand is is your throttle plate. Um, just kind of make a mark or take note of how that's on there. It will only go back on correctly one way, but again, just take note. Here's a separation. I'm looking at the spring and then the fuel joint. The fuel joint has two O-rings on it that will need to be replaced, and those O-rings are included in the carburetor uh, rebuild kit. All right, so here I'm drilling out the brass plug with a 1 8 drive drill bit um, that covers the mixture screw counting the turns out that it is currently at factory should be at two turns out and then you have four pieces that should come out the mixture screw itself a spring a small washer and then the o-ring goes closest to the bottom tip all right so this should be pretty straightforward uh, this is just clearing out the jets but pilot jet main jet um, i like to make sure they are 100 percent Totally good to go um, regarding blowing them out, cleaning them, and making sure daylight passes through. I use a pick through them if I have to, and I like to reuse the factory jets, not the aftermarket ones. All right, so I'm going to begin the reassembly. I'm going to start with the fuel joint, put the two O-rings on in the all balls kit. Uh, I like to put grease on all rubber before I reinstall, but you're going to get the two O-rings for the fuel joint. You're going to get two small O-rings that go underneath the vacuum uh, cap on the top of the carburetor. Then, of course, the two float bowl gaskets. Um, as mentioned before, you know, I use all ball stuff almost exclusively, and I never have an issue with the company uh, to include seals uh, for forks, bearings, gaskets, uh, total rebuild kits, it, it all just works. Um, great company. So we've got the gaskets on the flow bowls. We're going to transition to the air cutoff valve rebuild kit. Uh, this came from K&L. Uh, I just needed the spring and the diaphragm. It was a little cheaper this way. Um, so again, five pieces, two screws, a spring, a diaphragm, and the cover. Uh, the pin on the diaphragm goes down toward the ball valve and the cap and the diaphragm itself will only face one way, so that's relatively intuitive. Make sure you keep the pressure down on the spring while you're starting the screws to help you. All right, I'm going to transition to the top of the carburetor. Uh, start by installing the uh, vacuum piston and diaphragm. That's a small O-ring that I was talking about, uh, spring followed by the cap, and then the rebuild kit comes with two brand new screws uh, for the top just in case you stripped them on the way out. 
I'm going to begin the reassembly of the float bowl portion. So I'm greasing uh, the float valve seat O-ring, uh, inserting it, and then there's a panhead screw that basically secures it to the body of the carburetor. Kind of a press fit type of deal here um, with your fingers, nothing you know pressurized. Uh, needle jet holder, 8 millimeter nut driver, main jet has been verified clear. Um, one's a 110 and one's a 112.5 size on the main jet. Slow jet, 32.5 going in with a slotted screwdriver right now. And then um, I like to grease the edge of the float needle just a hair, make sure there's no initial like friction during the install. Position the float in place, press the pin, and then we're going to move on to measuring float height with a pair of calipers. Um, you have to do your own research on how to do this properly, but basically let gravity take the float down uh, until contact with the uh, pin on the uh, valve, and then that's where you measure to the top of the float. This measurement was 7.39 millimeters, factory of 7 millimeters plus or minus half a millimeter. And then, of course, we're going to finish here in the bottom with the uh, flow bowl install. Three new screws included with the uh, All Balls Rebuild Kit. Just make sure your gasket goes on evenly, of course. Going to install the mixture screw, so I remove the rubber protection on top of it. Spring goes on first, followed by the small silver washer, finally followed by the O-ring. Uh, make sure it's completely assembled and the tip's in good condition before you pop it in. And then from here, slotted screwdriver, and the guidance is you thread it all the way in until it lightly seats. Uh, if you try to torque it down, it will break something or break off inside of there. So lightly seated, and factory is back off two full turns, which is right there. Checking it out, inspecting it, and looks like that when it's done. So unfortunately, my camera died uh, during the joining of the two carburetors, but it's really just the reverse of how you disassembled it. Start with the throttle plate, make sure that's aligned correctly, and then just watch these spacers, make sure you put them back in the correct spot. Uh, don't damage your fuel joint O-rings on the install, and don't forget the spring, and you'll be okay here. All right, so just a quick tidbit on carburetor synchronization, but... Um, obviously two cylinders V twin so two carburetors on this guy but you would hook up your vacuum lines to two of the four gauges or two of the two gauges if you have one of those guys the other end is going to go into uh, these vacuum ports and then you sink carb two off of carburetor one's uh, vacuum pressure and then the adjustment is going to be down on this side you have to have the air box off to get to it um, but you basically go underneath here with a screwdriver and there's a little screw down there that will help you adjust the carburetors for synchronization purposes but you feed it through there um, when these are set in there like so and then what you're looking for is the two positions on the needle to match 